Grandmaster Boss, thanks a million for coming on. How are you? Fine. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Thanks a million for giving the time to come on. Yeah, no problem. Always available. If it's about Taekwondo, always available. For sure. So uh, as we were just saying, that what, what's what's training what's training like in Italy at the moment in terms of COVID? Like, are, are clubs open? Are they closed? Well, uh, our, our club where we are teaching is closed. Uh, it's really difficult times for 99% of the, of the gyms, they're all closed. But uh, luckily, we, we go to another gym where um, Master Leandro, my instructor, is teaching. And we have the possibility to, to train there because, uh, let's say, we are recognized by the um, Olympic Committee, let's say, like that. Not in Taekwondo, but uh, in another sport. But uh, so we are, uh, we are lucky to go there almost every day. It's, it's quite far away, I mean, for us because of the traffic in Rome, but uh, yeah, every afternoon around two, three o'clock. At two o'clock, I train myself with, uh, with Master Leandro. At three o'clock, we have Timothy and we have other guys and we have more people coming there, also from other gyms that are also, let's say, uh, quite high level sportsmen. And they all train together at least three times a week. It was very nice. And then we also have people that are there that are very well known in the MMA. Uh, they're also training at the same time that we are training in our and they have their own part. So it's, it's really nice because all the, let's say, the, the fighters are there and I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy the competition and it's, it's really beautiful to see the, the difference between the MMA, the ground fighting and we standing up, always standing up fighting. So it's really interesting. You learn all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's great. I suppose it's great. Like here we haven't had a chance to do much training in a while like we've done not a lot of like hitting each other i suppose as we could put it yeah. you know a lot of sparring uh we haven't done a lot of that um in a while which is frustrating like obviously you can do your kicking pads and you can do your technical kicking you can do your patterns but to actually get in and spar and do a few rounds we haven't done many of them in the last nearly 12 months which is it's a shame so it's great that i suppose you and some of the guys like timmy and that can get in and get some training done like that yeah, I mean, it's, it's a regular thing. I mean, it's almost every day we are there, uh, except for, for Sunday. But, uh, you know, important they are COVID-free. So, I mean, at least uh, once every two weeks, you have to go to get the, the certificate, you're COVID-free. And they, they just spar together, they don't mind. So it's just, uh, it just hit each other and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> when do you think, uh, is, is competition back? Did I, did I see that Master Leandro had... That Timmy had a, a was fighting recently, and and that was was that recent. Is, comp is competition back? Yeah, you know, uh, as we are also in 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 the, in the Waco world, uh, and uh, we also like that very much because it's, they have a lot of very good competitors, and you can choose. You can do the the point, you can do the light, you can do the kick light, and you can also do full. So uh, two months ago, our region was talking about to have a competition let's say COVID free. So there was a lot of uh, rules and regulation that we had to follow, of course. In the hall, we could be only with our competitor and the others, other, uh, let's say the partner of the other guy was the same. So we were just a few people in the hall. And as soon as the competition finished, we had to get out. And then other people came out in. So we had one room to warm up and that was really right and nice arranged. And it was a full contact and Timmy said, I want to try. And so. He went for it. It was not a problem. He did very well. So yeah. very proud of it. A different experience, I imagine, though, like with the regulations and the, the guidelines and that did you have to follow? Different experience, I would imagine. Uh, you mean about the fighting? No, not just, just the whole setup. Like, like you said, oh, you, had, the whole you, had, setup. Yeah, yeah, you, had, yeah. you had to leave no. straight away and that sort of stuff. Like something maybe that's not... You're yeah. Not for example, uh, the day before, we had to go for the COVID to, to make sure that we are uh, negative. So uh, I'm myself, Leandro, and uh, I had some other competitors too. They also were fighting. So we all went for the, for the COVID uh, and the bus, we were all negative. So with that piece of paper, uh, we, could, uh, we could join. It was very nice. It was in a nice atmosphere. It was in, in a very, very big gym where we also sometimes go to, to practice. So, you know, it's, it's, it's in our region, in, in the Rome region, Lazio, it's called Lazio. So there's a lot of clubs I think we have uh, between Taekwondo and kickboxing and so on. There will be at least uh, 400, 500 clubs. Oh. So it's, yeah, it's very big. Yeah. It's very big. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of people 
training and uh, it's all mixed, you know. Also, we have a possibility to train with each other. So for, so for example, one instructor invites us and we go there or we invite other guys to come with us. So, and this is on a regular basis. So it's very nice and I mean, it's not necessary to be only concentrated on one thing, fighting is fighting. So the more you can enjoy, the more it is. Of course, then you concentrate on light contact, can be ITF or VACO, you can concentrate on, other, on your own style, what you prefer. So we do, of course, we do light contacts. That is our, uh, yeah, our main goal at this moment. But I don't know, I, my son is thinking about other things. So I let him just uh, think about it and we will see where it goes to. Yeah, that's it's great. important not, not to be too fixed on, on one thing, you know, because uh, if you have the possibility and you are around, surrounded by many, many good people and many other art martial arts, well, you have maybe you can change your mind. I'm not, yeah. I'm not perfect. There's so many people that are much better than me and, and many other things. So we have to be open or have an open mind. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm not sure there's many, particularly I suppose maybe grandmasters in one martial art that might think the same, you know, sometimes I suppose people can become very fixed in, you know, that's, well, like maybe it's only Taekwondo and Taekwondo is the only, or maybe it's kickboxing or maybe it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or whatever. And they become, this is, this is it. Like it's good. I think it's good that you're open to go. Well, we can learn a bit from here. We can compete over there and that. We can try this. We can try that and see. And like I said, decide yeah. where you want to go. I'm sure 99% of the grandmas disagree with me, but it's it's not my <laughs> problem <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you know taekwondo is an art and there is a sport. Okay, in the art, of course, I love my art, so I will never never be aside my art. But sports is sports. You mean you can do light contact you can do full it doesn't matter it's sports is sports it can there's nothing to do with a martial arts martial art is we follow general che the patterns the, 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 the step sparring we do the self-defense that's great that's 100 percent what i'm doing always always i did all my life but in the sports part i'm more open i always have been open so not only for the last five years or because my son is doing that i also was involved in the WTF many, many years ago when I was still in Holland. I had also one world champion in WTF who was my student. So, I mean, why not? You can learn from everything. And it's more experience you get, more you can teach, more you can learn, more, more you can give. Yeah, 100% I would agree. And I know I mentioned there, like the way the competition kind of set up, but like obviously with the COVID test, what do you think championship, like an ITF championships will look like when they come back? Do you think there'll be testing? Do you think there'll be temperature checks or what what do, you, what do you think maybe competition would look like when it comes back in itf you mean yeah in itf well, what do, what do you think of course about? they have to if we have an itf championship but i don't see it in a very near future but if it is it can only be uh, in a country where the itf is recognized by the government only that because the government sets the rules the, the, the same here you get a long letter and the long letter is written you have to follow Pam, 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 all these rules. If you follow all these rules, then the organizer, that takes also a big risk because he has to control everything. So there have to be people in the entrance and you have to be one day before you have to do the way in, you have to bring all the paperwork. So if an ITF, someone wants to do that, that would be great, of course, but it has, it has to start in your own country. And internationally, I don't see it. I mean, so many championships we are being canceled. Yeah. So. Yeah, like it's like it's so hard even at the moment, you know. Like some countries maybe can can fly in and not have to. It's like I go into self isolation, and then other ones do, and you know, there's all this sort of thing. Like it's it's so it's so tricky, isn't it? So tricky. Yeah, that I try and organize. It's also very let's say demotivated for all you competitors that you can't have a regular training, you can't go to the gym, you can't see your friends. I mean, also social life. I mean, I see it here. I see it with my kids. I see it. With my with my students, I mean the whole social life is down to nothing. It's really really difficult difficult, and it's also very difficult to be uh, to be motivated. I mean the students. How can I motivate my students? My yeah, giving the opportunity to go to a gym where we can still can can practice. I mean that is not for everybody, of course. That's only for my top people can go. I not a regular student. They can go on Zoom or. We have a face-to-face -face, uh, outside training. Timothy does some personal training with people, but it's outside, one-to-one. -one. 
uh, just to make sure that uh, everything is uh, in line, let's say, but I mean, it's always, you have to be negative. You have to be careful because you never know. It can strike everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So like, have you been doing class it has it been like classes on zoom like has that been mostly what, what's what's been happening like you know master leandro and and timmy and all that they've been doing classes online has that been the way it's been we have been done zoom from the beginning the COVID started we have been doing zoom until now but uh, our let's say our membership started from 100 percent to 20 percent because people get tired of this of this zoom i mean they, they don't want to follow it maybe some special classes that that then okay they can be there but most of them and then also of course they, they have to pay i mean you cannot do it for free you cannot do this is this is your job i mean if you have a gym or a, you teach in the gym and you have to make your money with taekwondo or with other sports whatever yeah there must be also some some payment and our people have been very loyal I have to be, be very honest but in the end of course we dropped a lot maybe to maybe 20 30 people that that pay and the rest, uh, yes, I don't want to say disappeared. It's, a, it's, it's not a nice word, but let's say between lines disappeared. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had the same like that. As, as you said, like we have our own f- full time gym, which like, you know, there's still bills and that need to be paid there and stuff like that. So it's, 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 it's not easy. You know, like you have to keep the classes going and, and yeah, the membership, like the, it's been up and down, I suppose, even from day to day. Like, you know, we do it twice. We do give the, two classes a week online and you know one day can be quite good the next day can drop off a bit like it's so hard like to keep a consistency because i think i think it's too easy you know at home to like not log on you know it's it, you know it's, there's, a, there's something to be said about having to get up and actually go to to training not just get off the couch and stand in front of the tv or the laptop you know it's it's much easier to to convince yourself not to do that especially i suppose when you're a kid and you're, you're looking at you know the place you're looking at video games and that <laughs> yeah but for example Myself, I have given a lot of, I am still doing, I give a lot of Zoom uh, training from my federation, for our federation. So I did all the patterns from, from, from Chunji to Tungil. Um, we have, I think, about five or six uh, simmers I gave in, in, the, in, the, in the technical part. Now I'm doing the step sparring part for my federation uh, because I'm also uh, uh, employed by the federation. So I, I have to, do, to work and I do it, of course, uh, also with a lot of passion and with a lot of, I, I also feel fun to teach, still teach even by Zoom. But of course you have to realize that people, they don't have space at home. You can't do different, different difficult things. I mean, I, I was on, uh, on Zoom uh, uh, last week, last weekend uh, in Holland, they had uh, about 200 people on Zoom. And uh, uh, Stefan was, Stefan Tabladu was teaching and it was really great what he was doing. Was, I really enjoyed what he was doing. But then he did a blitz uh, action and people start to chat and write and wrote, sorry, I don't have the space to do the blitz. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, people, not all the people have a 50 square meter (laughs) living room. I mean, most of them they do in the bedroom or wherever. So that was was really funny. (laughs) So we have to realize that uh, when you teach on the Zoom, most of the people, they are on a very narrow square of maybe four, five, six square meters, so you can't do it too many things. I, I mean, if you start with the patterns, it's already, already difficult. Think about a high pattern in, in Taekwondo, they don't have space to do it. So yeah. most of the people then in the end sit down and watch. I don't like that. <laughs> I, I, I want everybody to practice it. So when I go on the Zoom and I look at the, all the, all these people that are sitting down, I get really angry, but what can we do? <laughs> yeah, uh, that is definitely a challenge, yeah, when you're on your side and you're sitting, like I said, the bedroom, you know. No, so, yeah. So yeah. So I suppose actually, like, how how did you get started in taekwondo? Where where, where did the journey begin? Why 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 was it taekwondo? Why was it not something else? Or did you do other sports? Like, where, where did the journey no, begin? Just by luck, you know, because I played football uh, in my in my small town where I was born, and um, one day from uh, after training, I was on my bicycle, and I always passed this uh, school gym where some people in in white. Uh, kimonos, whatever, were training. And then one day I said, I'm going to have a look. So I, I went inside and uh, the instructor was there. And he was hitting the wall with his, with his, with his hands, with his fist, hard, hard, hard. That, that was, those times were different than we have now, of course. 
And uh, oh, I was impressed by that. So I said, uh, when can I come and uh, do one lesson? I said, okay, come next day. Okay, next day I, I went there. I, and I was one of the youngest because in those times I, wa I was 15 at that time. And it was, I mean, it was only for adults. I mean, for Taekwondo was not for kids. There were no kids in that time. So I was a little bit nervous. So I did one lesson. And so we did the warming up and after the warming up, it was about half an hour going up and down with a walking stance and punch. It was really boring. I didn't like it at all. I had no patience for that. So I didn't go again. It was one day. One day. Then two months ago, uh, later, one of my friends, his, his brother, he was also teaching. He was the brown belt. In those times we had no red belts. It was brown belts. Okay. I said, you know, why don't you come with me there? This evening we go for Taekwondo. He said, no, no, I went once and I did not like it. I said, because there was only the going up and down, walking with a punch. And I said, no, but we do a lot of fighting. I said, ah, ah okay. <laughs> I said, I go with you. So we went to his brother. He was teaching uh, in a small gym at five kilometers from my town. So I went there on the bicycle, like always. And uh, so I, uh, I entered the gym. All adults, I was the youngest again. Okay, doesn't matter. And it was really enjoyable. We, it was half an hour, 45 minutes only sparring. I did not know nothing, of course, but I could make a punch. I could make a front, front kick in the first lesson. And that was it. I, I stayed. I mean, that's 52 years ago, and I still do the same stuff. I'm still <laughs> punching and kicking. <laughs> so I, I really fell in love. I think, I don't know, it's, I think it's love at the first sight, maybe not at the second sight, maybe, but uh, yeah, that, that was it. So I started and then uh, after a few years in 1972, after three, four years of training, I did my black belt, uh, first degree. And then uh, two years after, I thought 1974, I did my second degree together with my instructor. Of course, our head instructor, he was in Groningen. It was about 30 kilometers away, and my father did not like that I was doing Taekwondo. I mean, he did not like it, so he didn't give me any money. So I need to go on the bicycle to go to Groningen for 30 kilometers to practice foot out and, and come back. And you know, in Holland, there's always a lot of wind. So <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah. the warming up. The warming up was my <laughs> bicycle going to the, to the training, uh -huh. but it was a good time. So really, after three months of training, I started to train every day and I have done until now always. Yeah. That's, that, that's dedication. Like to, to do that every day, like to travel that far. Yeah. At that time, I mean, about 15, 16, I mean, you don't care. Now you just want to go there and you want to train. You want to, I wanted to become, become someone. I wanted to become good. So I, I, and I think I have some talent or maybe some mentalities and good character for that sports or get it, that art. So it went well. I mean, uh, I had some success. I mean, in those times we had no competition. It was one competition a year. That was it. Maybe, maybe two, because Taekwondo was just started. I mean, it was only for two years in, the, in, in Holland, because I started 68, 69, and Taekwondo was introduced in Holland in 66. So I'm one of the eldest, let's say, um, teach, teaching or not teaching or training Taekwondo. Yeah, I don't like to say that because it means that I'm old and I, I don't want to go to the past all the time, you know. Wise, that's what I mean. Wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the time flies, eh? You, I mean, uh, it goes really, really fast. Yeah. Yeah. When you are a grandmaster, it's no good at all. It means that you're over sixty. There's no good at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Adrian always says, Mister Mister Barber, my instructor. Like he always says to the kids, like oh, if you're a grandmaster, it means you're it, just, it means you're old. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But, but most of most many people are old because they are they want to be old. There's no need to be old. I mean, if you just yeah. practice all the time. You don't have to practice two three hours a day. If you practice half an hour a day, you did any, at least something. So yeah. you were busy. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what did your what did your father have against taekwondo was it was it the fighting he didn't like you doing or yeah you, yeah you have to go back 50 years ago i mean martial arts 50 years ago that was you know that was really violent no i mean when you did karate because taekwondo it, it wasn't called taekwondo they called it super karate at that time i did not go for taekwondo i got i went for super super karate taekwondo something like that 
So because we in Taekwondo they were kicking more than in karate, so it, they called it that time super karate. So when I came home, now this is a story maybe I told many times, but I want to tell it one more time. So after uh, the training uh, that I did uh, with my with my friends, my friend's brother training, I had no kimono, so they gave me a kimono. So I came home with this uh, secondhand kimono, and uh, it was all wet, of course, because we sweat a lot. And then my mother said, what's that? I said, that's the kimono. Oh, I said, what, what about that? So yeah, I went for karate, super karate training. Taekwondo was Korean, Korean martial art. Oh. So no, 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 my mother. And my father came right away. He said, what's that? I said, yeah, I went for this lesson. No, 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 no. You play football. You, you play football, that's it. I said, no, no, I want to do that because I like that. I, I really enjoyed it. I said, no, no. Okay. I said, you don't go again. I didn't say nothing. Next day, I went again. I went training. I came home. Okay, you know, 50 years ago, how the parents treated their kids. It was uh, some, let's say, kicking and punching in those times. So I got a little bit hit in order to get my lesson. But the third day I went again, the fourth day I went again, the fifth day again, again. And then my father said, okay, do what you want. And I was 15 at that time. So I, I really knew what I wanted. And that was my, that was it. Yeah. Now we don't hit our kids anymore because we get right away, we get sold or whatever. So. Yeah. But it didn't do any good hit you anyway, because you still, because you still, because <laughs> you still went. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went every, every for three days, four days, four days. I, I got hit by my father, but it was good. It was not a problem. Uh, and Taekwondo also, I also got hit all the time. Yeah. For many years, I got hit. Then I got better, and then I started to hit the people. Uh, yeah, but yeah. for many years, I got hit. And those times, we had no safety equipment. Okay, so you can imagine. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> safety equipment started in 1973, 1974. So all my competition I did from 1970, 70, 71, 273, 74 was without equipment. It was just bare foot, bare hands. And of course, there were, the contact was very light between lines, of course. But it was like that. Beautiful. Yeah. Karate kid style. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it. It was different than now, you know. Now, yeah. now we take care. They don't get hurt. We take care. They make no too much contact. And we make so many rules. And at the end, yeah, it's coming like TikTok. You know, the, the sparring in ITF is like, yeah, there is an action of uh, three, four actions, and then the referee right away stops you and you stop and they lose the time and you start again. And uh, well, anyhow, that's yeah. what we have. Yeah. I do, I do want to come back to that it's a, a little bit later, but I want to talk about like when you were at the competition. Um, would you you were you always more of a a, a fighter like w w more so like more so than doing maybe the patterns when you started competing? I I I was not in no. Uh, let's say in my career until I was a fourth degree, I did not care too much about the pattern because I was national coach and at that time, and for me the sparring was the most, and I had a lot of world champions in sparring in that time. Then I came in 1985. I came to Italy as a technical director. So for four years, I went up and down to Italy to teach every month to the Italian Federation. In that time, of course, the, in Italy, there were, there were people, they were very, quite good in the patterns. I was not so good in the patterns. I did not know too much of the patterns, okay? But uh, yeah, I had to change my, 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 my mind because uh, I needed to teach also the patterns. So let's say from that time, 19, well, 84, 85, I really started to get more and more interested in the pattern and to, to force myself to, to get on, 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 the, on the high level, on the highest level in order to teach well to my, to my Italian uh, students. Well, I think I did a quite good job. I tried, I tried to do good because I like the patterns now. I really like, but uh, I like more the application of the technique. And the pattern in its own, I mean, it's just movements that the General, General Choi founded that so we have to do a pattern that takes 68 movements and the 68 movements there is, we need to find some creativity to make the application. Otherwise, 
this old pattern doesn't make sense. No, I mean, if I teach a pattern to a student, which means Chung Ji, and this student becomes a black belt, he never make a low block against the front kick or against the pad, or he doesn't know the reality that it hurts when you block. What then this, all this, all these techniques makes no sense. So I think my approach to teach a pattern is different than many other people do that. Yeah. And it, so like, I suppose as well, did, did you kind of stop competition, I suppose, quite young, maybe? Was I right? Yeah, there? Uh, well, yeah well, I, I competed from 1970 to 1978. Why? Why I stopped uh, 78? So I was uh, 26 years old at that time. I stopped because I had my gym in my small town. So I was teaching at that time three times a week in my gym. And I went three times a week to my instructor in Groningen. So in my gym, I had I had a lot of very, very good competitors. So, I mean, it, there comes a time that one of your students becomes as you in the same weight class. It becomes also black belt. I, I didn't want to co compete against my own students. That was no good. And I needed to give my time and my experience to my students. So that, that was the time I said, no, no, I stopped. Then in 1979, I became an assistant uh, coach in Holland. And in 1981, I became head coach in Holland for the for the national team. So I mean, was good competing. Uh, I went seven times in a row. I won the national title, and that was okay. I mean, it's when you look back, it's nice, but it's much more fun to create champions. I I like to create people and to work with people and to make for someone that is not so good that I can see in someone that he can become a champion. That, that is what I like. And then I like to have people around me that really want to work and to get to the highest level. But there are, it's one on the 1,000 people that can become the champion. There's not so many. Yeah. You were European champion as well. Am I correct in saying that? Sorry? You were European champion as well. Am I right in saying that? You won the you Yes. Your... <laughs> yeah. I also won the first European championship in Holland until 63 kilograms. Yes. In 90... 76. Yeah. You were not born at that time. You were still no. some, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, like, you, you won obviously minus 63 European champion and Timmy has been minus 63 European champion. That's kind of cool that like, you know that they won the exact same. Uh, that, that, that was fantastic. It was exactly 40 years later. So because Timothy won the Euros in 2016. Yeah. So, uh, that was really a fantastic uh, day, yeah. you know, 40 years after you your son becomes the champion. That, that was really nice. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. And who were, the, who were the other top guys around that time? Who would have been the top competitors that you would have been in the divisions around your time at European Championships? Well, in my time, I mean, we were not so many. I think in, in, in my, my comp in that time when I won European Champion, I think we were maybe 16 or maybe less than 16 competitors. Because the, the Taekwondo was very small in Europe, yeah. you know? I mean, 1976 and we were... I mean, we were just not, not well organized in those times. I mean, it, it was just, I mean, if you compare to the WT, they were so far ahead because they had the money and we were just poor and we were not professional. I mean, there was so much work to do. So, I mean, therefore also, I mean, when I started to work for the ITF, my only goal was to, to, to work for the ITF to make something better. Yeah. I guess was... Like that, you, you've you held a number of different roles within the ITF, you know, throughout the years. Yeah, <laughs> they put me everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, yeah, you know, these this are so, so many nice stories. I don't know how much time we have, but this is a nice story, you know, because when the general passed away, so the, the, the ITF split it, no? you know, in 2002, when we had a meeting in, in Vienna, Grandmaster Choi yung he, he he left already. So he made his own organization. So we were left with the North Koreans and all the rest of the world. And in, this, uh, in the North Koreans, they did not like uh, that uh, Mr. McLellan, he was the acting president at that moment. They did not like it. They, they, they wanted to have the power. So then one day, okay, so we had the World Championship, Junior World Championships in Puerto Rico. I went there and uh, so Grandmaster Tran was there and Grandmaster Marano, Grandmaster uh, Trachtenberg and Grandmaster Benny Riviera. So I arrived on the airport, they were waiting for me. Right away, we go to the hotel, right away, they plug me in the room. Right away, they start to talk with me about what we are going to do with this ITF and so on and so on. So after three days, I, uh, I was first the secretary general, then I was the, the technical director, and then I was the treasurer. 
So in, in the end, we made the deal that we should go for this kind of position. So I went to treasurer. So I've been the ITF treasurer for some years, and then I went to ITF secretary general for some years, and then I became the ITF director for eight years, and that was it. I lost my uh, election for, uh, for president. Okay, it's done, doesn't matter. Life goes on, I'm still happy. And uh, so that's it. So a lot of uh, positions I had. Yeah. But then as well, like obviously you were part of the tournament and umpire committee then as well throughout that time as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah, in the, in the time I was a secretary general, I think I was also uh, the, um, the chairman of the umpire and tournament committee and so on and so on. And I was also in the IAC technical committee. So I had some positions. They really liked me at that time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and was that uh, was that was that your goal as part of the tournament umpire committee to take maybe the competition from being not so professional to more of what you had seen with the WT and more a more professional setup? Uh yes, it, it always have been my 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 biggest uh, wish that ITF would be on the same level as competition of the of WT, even without all the money they have uh, and all the recognition, no. Because we are not recognized. I mean, we. I think in the ITF we have, uh, let's say, less than 20 countries that are really recognized by the government. That means they have no fun, funding. And if you have no funding, that means that the competitors has to pay all their own expenses. And nevertheless, that the ITF, the ITFs, because there are many ITFs, they are still growing. Yes, there are a lot of people do ITF. I mean, I think worldwide that the WT is not bigger than us, but also we are too much divided. That's, that's our biggest pity that, uh, yeah, I think the rank is more important than getting together of many. That's yeah. a really big pity because we are really big all over the world. But if you have 15 or 60 or 20 ITFs around the world and everybody's pleased with that, yeah, you never get together because everybody has a role in that, in his organization, they want to give it up. So it will be very difficult to get together one day. I hope so. But yeah, me too. Me too. Because, like you said, even even the countries that do have government recognition don't necess- aren't necessarily getting funding because, like, it's 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 much easier to give funding to the sports that are in the Olympics, you know, and so, we're not. And so it's it's heartless. Even if they go, oh yeah, that's very good, and you're professional, and the way you organise yeah. your association is all very good, but you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to give you some funding to, and fund competitors, which is a shame. And also, not only that, it's also, you know, the visibility of a competitor. Okay, you are also a, a world champion, no? Yes, yes. I, I, yeah, in Ireland, we have a lot of world champions. Let's in, also in our country. Okay, there are world champions all around the world in the ITF. You know, what kind of visibility we have? Almost nothing. You walk on the street, nobody knows you. So, I mean, this, this is something that, I mean, me as a father, I have to be honest with my, with my boy. If my boy is, 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 is a good, not because oh, only my boy, but also with my students that are really good. What can I give to my students? So in the end, you're, you're looking for some other ways, which is maybe this is not correct, but as a father, I look at that. And maybe as an instructor or as a grandmaster, I look in, in, in other options. I have to look at other options. Also to be recognized in your own country as an instructor. I mean, we are in ITF in Italy, we are not recognized by the government. That means we are not official instructors. So what do we do? We have to go through another channel in order to get our instructor license. Otherwise we can't even teach. So that, that have, we have been doing, and I mean, I have been crit- criticized by a lot of people, but most of the people do not even know what's going on and why it, it has been done. Because everything has a reason no, in life, no? Because when people start to criticize, first they have to know why I'm, I'm criticizing people. I mean, you should never criticize. You first, you have to know what are the reasons behind some decisions. And then, of course, it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, oh, he's right. Maybe I should do the same. Yeah? And this sometimes is really a little bit hard to swallow for, some, for, a lot, for a lot of people that I took some decisions in my life that maybe not everybody agrees with, but it's okay. This is my, my way that I try to keep up with with everything yeah yeah it's so it's like, like like you said like when it actually is so big across so many countries and that so many aren't recognized and like you said have to go through different channels to be recognized it's it is such a challenge yeah in fact it's a, it's a shame you know 
because let, let's put all the ego and whatever positions aside. Let's, okay, now look at yourself. You are a competitor. Timothy is a competitor. There are so many competitors. What do they want? They want to compete against everybody. Every, doesn't matter which idea. They want to compete er against everybody. So what do we do? We don't do nothing. Because at the highest level, we block everything for I don't know what kind of reasons. And, but we do that because it seems normal, no? There's no revolution <laughs> by the competitors there because everybody seems to be happy with his medal or with his title. But in the end, there are 10 world champions in your weight class 57 or in, uh, in a 63 or in a 78. There are so many world champions. So who is the, the, real, the real one? So what I would like to say in this uh, interview with you, hopefully everybody wakes up and at least we have one world championship in the world. Yeah, maybe in the next years that it's open to all ITFs. So that all the championships come, only one per country from, uh, from each organization can join the world championship. And then we will see, yeah, a real championships. I, I hope that we can make that. That would be my biggest risk for ITF. Yeah. But it's true, as you say, it's like, it's, it, it's not the competitors who are against that because the competitors want to compete. It's the, it's, it's people above that. You know what I mean? Like, I think if you ask, I, I, any, if, if, you, if you ask any competitor, I'm sure it's like, I know myself, I'm sure Timmy's the same. We'll say, yeah, bring them in. It's more people to compete against. We just want competition. But it's like you say, it's people above that who have decided it doesn't suit them. But it's normal, Jamie, because you, you talk with the other guys. Okay. You talk with the other guys. Like I talk as a grandmaster with other guys like you. Okay. Because it's, it's useless for me to talk to other grandmasters, masters, master, whatever, that have only one, one direction, you know? But myself, if I'm open to, to this kind of uh, conversation with the students or with masters or with other grandmasters that are on, on the level of thinking as myself, then we can make, make something. So I really hope that the ITF board, our ITF board and the, the North Koreans and Choi Yong Wah, Grandmaster Choi Yong Wah and other, all the other from the union, all of these people, one day sit on the round table, like they did in the Asian times, they sit on the round table with a sword on the table, okay, and sit on the table and just organize one world championships altogether. It would be really something. Yeah, and also we can show the WTDM how really, how big we are and how good we are. Yeah. But if we don't do that, we will be always the same, the underdogs all the time. Yeah. And do you think, do you think the World Cup in Slovenia is a bit, maybe a step in that direction? Because I know that, that the plans are to have that, to be open to some other ITF groups. Do you think that's a step in the right direction? Well, in the World Cup in Slovenia, I'm co-organizer together with uh, Master Thomas. Oh, so, yeah. and of course, uh, the ITF, uh, you know, there are some talking about it. But Jamie, if you do not announce this now and you make it really, you know, on the social, uh, yeah, on the Facebook and on Instagram and on the ITF website and all the other websites, you make it so open that everybody really gets the point of view that they can join, that then it's something. Yeah, but I mean, it has to be promoted, be promoted, and not, not on, on, the, on, the, on the small scale, on, the, on a very, very big scale. But then we will have a luxury problem because we will have too many people maybe. Because normally if the COVID will finish this year, hopefully this year, so 1922, there is no big, big, really big competition. Okay, we have open championship like in Ireland, like in Italy, and like in, in, in like in Holland, the open Dutch. There are so many big championships, but the World Cup will be bigger. So everybody wants to go to the World Cup. So what do we do if we have more than 2,000 people? We need two weeks of <laughs> championships then. <laughs> okay, so that, that will be a luxury problem. Too many people. Uh, oh, hopefully everything goes well and we will do all the best to make a, a different championship than, than all the ones before because for me a championship is not only a championship. For me the championship is, you know, it's like uh, enjoyment, happiness. Not only to be on the floor but also around. Where do you do it? Yeah. And you can, okay, Slovenia is not on the sea. I mean Maribor is not on the sea but the, the town is nice. There's a lot of things to do. Uh, you can stroll around and so on and so on. So in, in the end, uh, I mean copper. Copper is, uh, uh, sorry, we talk about copper. 
uh, Capri is uh, is a be beautiful place, and around it's very nice. So it's on the sea. Sorry, so there, there's a lot of things to do. So it will be the, make the even even more interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that yeah, I think that is a big thing about like I suppose these tournaments. There are some bit like like or I suppose the equivalent of what we can have a, an Olympics, like you know a World Championships or maybe even a World Cup. It's the close thing we get. So like you kind of want to have a nice feel, a nice atmosphere, a nice place to be. Um, to, to, to make it an, a, a good occasion and a, and a good and a good event. Yeah, for me, number one is always location. For me, the location is the most important because for me, uh, personally, but I also know from many many other people, the location already makes something about it. No, I mean, if you go, let's say in Siberia, where it's four meters high of snow, and you get out of the plane, I think you will not have a smile on your face. But if you <laughs> if you go to Italy and you arrive on the airport in Venice, for example, and the door of the uh, of the plane goes open and the sun is shining and you have your shorts on, yeah, and you have a t-shirt on to show your biceps, okay, you have a big smile on your face. I mean, the happiness already starts in a very different way. This is also already the first approach of the competitor. How does he feel in the environment? Where does he go? Is this a nice place to go? Oh, I'm so happy to go there because there is a sea, there are the restaurants, there's a good food, they have a beautiful gelato and so on and so on. And it makes competition so much better. I mean, you go to a place where there's nothing around the hall, even if the hall, the hall is beautiful. What do you do in the evening? Yeah, you sit in the, in, in the, the, the lounge of the hotel talking to each other. That's, that's, not, that's not only competition. Competition is so much more in my opinion. Yeah. I've definitely had a, a, a couple of the, the times, you know, the, the when the championships run in Italy, you know, we'll get to wear the shorts at this one. That's always, a, we always love that <laughs> one. <laughs> I mean, when I organized the world championship, it was in July in 2001. Okay. That until now, it was the biggest one because we had 754 competitors from 72 countries. I mean, not the biggest in number, but where well, the biggest in number was only one per category and it was only the adults. So that was a really big one. I did a lot of euros, three euros. It was always in Riccione or it was in Rimini. We did one world championships in in uh, World Cup. We did in the north. It was beautiful in uh, in what was it? Riva del Garda. Riva del Garda. Yeah, it was a nice place also. Beautiful place. So we yeah. always try to do in 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 an environment uh, that people really can enjoy and can stroll around in the evening and to to enjoy. Yeah, and also pick the time, no? Uh, July, May, September is still okay. August, we can't do in August because there are too all the much. hotels, everything is full, it's too much tourism, so you can't do any. Yeah. You have to do it always just before the, the season but, yeah. or after season, let's say like that. Mm. I've, uh, I've heard a story. I, I, I can't remember. I think it was. I think it was Adrian. I think it was Mr. Bond that was telling me the story. But uh, when you went to train in North Korea, that there was a, that that was, seemed to be a mad story. That you went to North Korea to train or something. And, no, no. <laughs> well, well, it seemed like we a mad story. But, yeah, we went. We went to North Korea because of the World Championship. We talk about '92, okay, 1992. So yeah, that 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 that's something. And when you go to North Korea, you arrive on the airport. It's in your prisoner. You get, you get out of the plane, you get in the bus, you get in the hotel, you can go out. When you have to compete, they get you in the bus, they, they bring you to the sports hall, they control you, you can't go out. The, fin the tournament finishes the day, you get in the bus, you go to the hotel and you stay in the hotel, you can't go out. Ah, it's, it's... But of course, let's be very honest, in our organization, in our idea, we miss the North Korean because they are really good. Uh, so, I mean, this is something that we, that we really miss, unfortunately. We don't have because it's another ITF, but I feel a little bit lucky. No, no, I didn't go there to train. No, I, I just went, went there with a the national team of Italy, and we were four of us. Because at that time, 1992, you know, we had to fly from Rome to uh, Sofia. You know, this is a nice story. So we are in Sofia. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about 92, eh? not about now. So we arrive on the airport and we are on the airport together with, I think, with the Finnish people. There were some other countries too. And we were waiting and we were waiting. So how about, about uh, tickets? Because we just went there. We had nothing. We only needed to pay $1,000 each to the guy in charge 
of the North Koreans. We, we didn't do nothing. Okay. So we are all waiting there in the lounge. <laughs> and then one Korean guy comes to us and say, Italy, yeah. I raised my hand, Italy here. I, this guy said to me, come with me. Okay, I, I follow the guy. He has the car outside the, the, the building, the airport, outside the building, and we go in the car. He said, Italy, four people? Yes, four people, 4,000. Okay, I gave the guy 4,000. Okay, and he gave me four tickets. Not really airplane tickets, four tickets. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> I go back into the, <laughs> into the hall. So all the people, the same uh, procedure. Okay, so we all have this ticket in our hand and we are waiting and we are waiting. Nothing is going on, nothing is going on. Then we heard some noise. A plane is coming, we heard some noise. I said, maybe that's our plane. Okay, yeah, the plane is landing and that's our plane. So we go to our plane. Yeah, we could sit wherever we want. And we, we sit and we are in this old plane. And it brought us, I think, um, if I don't, I don't remember too well, but I think it was uh, Sofia to West, West Berlin. From West Berlin, I think Mongolia. From Mongolia to another place, I think in China. I'm not sure. And then we went to Pyongyang. So it was a long, long trip, nothing on board, no, no screens, no television, no video, nothing. Only my partner next to me, I could talk to him. There was nothing else. So that was the trip to Korea and you arrive and you, what I said before, you go to the hotel with the bus, all followed by others. And then from the hotel, you go to the sports hall and that's it, all followed by others. And that's the procedure. So you have nothing, so we were, uh, the finish, the, I mean, the championship for us was finished. And we asked uh, the guy, the, the Korean guy, because you have a translator, which is not a really, really a translator, it's just a guy who takes care of you, like a detective. So we were fed up with it, and the Germans were fed up with it, and we all wanted to leave this North Korea. Okay, so we asked our guide, I said, please, uh, can you arrange that we go back uh, three days before the championship finished, because we finished, and the Germans did the same. So we were pushing a lot, pushing a lot. And in the end, okay, we got the, the, the go to go home. And that was the first time that we were all in the plane leaving Pyongyang and everybody was shouting, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we go home, we go home, we go home. <laughs> oh gosh, what an experience. Never, never again, I hope. Um, Anyhow. Uh, and what was the tournament like? What was the actual world championships like there then? Oh, that was, I mean, the worst. That was, the, I was the coach at that time for it. That was my last day of coaching because I said, from now on, I'm going to put my efforts for ITF. Because, Jamie, you can't imagine. I mean, you should ask some other people that, that went there, not only me, because I have my opinion now, but it was the worst even ever. We could not get in the hall because it was such a, a mess that you had this North Korean military people with this Galaznikov standing in the door and we, they did not allow us to go in and i had one competitor they had to compete so we went upstairs in tribune and we we went down from i mean maybe two three meters high jumping to go down to the floor to go to our to our ring because they didn't leave our letters in it was such a mess well you know another experience in life it always it makes you always more experienced it's yeah. really terrible. I mean, I, I don't wish it to you. Eh? <laughs> I, I wish yeah. it to nobody, nobody. But you yeah. know, you can, you, some of you youngsters, many of you young, you cannot imagine where we went through, but we are still here because we just swallow down everything and we, we just continue working for ITF and paying our dues to ITF to make something better. Yeah, like that, okay. It, it makes a great story, you know? If nothing else, it makes a great story. Uh, you, you know, everything you do in your life has a memory and has a story. And I have thousands of them because you go through so many things. I mean, not only as a coach or as a technical director or things that happened in the, champ in the championship when you are a chairman, what happens with some coaches, how they behave and so on and so on. So I think from 1983 that uh, 1993 when I, no, it was... 2003, 2003, I think that I got a little bit more in charge to help the ITF. Of course, from 1993, 2002, I was working also as a chairman of the ITF, first in the tournament, then as a chairman, and then 
many things happened in my career and in those years that I was put aside and I was put in again. And then in 1997, World Championship in Hungary and uh, Russia, I, I resigned from my, from, my, from my position because of other things. But anyhow, then in 1999, we had a World Championships in Argentina. There was, you know, we all remember that, most of us. And then I got back as a tournament uh, director in 2001 for the World Championships in Italy, which I also organized. And then at that time, we did not have internet. So it was all by fax. I made uh, more than 1,000 <laughs> ID cards by hand in the middle of the night when the faxes arrived at my home with my wife together. We did all by hand. We plastify all by hand. That was a very good time, beautiful. I re really look back with a lot of pleasure to that even. And of course, we had the you know, there. We had the North Koreans, it was the last time the North Koreans more or less. Uh, <laughs> I joined the ITF uh, in that uh, competition it was really good. Yeah, that's something like you know that I normally have. For like even I'm sure a lot of people just take for granted. You just turn up and there's just an ID card because it's so easy you now to get to, to print ID cards. You know, you just take it for granted. For you know, there was a there was a time when it was a bit more of an effort had to be put in by somebody. Oh, <laughs> it just, it just uh, so happened I mean, to be you. <laughs> I can tell you a small story. Uh, I mean, many stories about the 2001, but one story is. You know, as it was all done by, by fax or by, by phone, I mean, we had at that moment that we, uh, we had all the inscriptions. So we had about, let's say, let's say 71 countries. Okay. But we had 72. All right. So the, the, we have the day of uh, arrivals. So everybody arrives. We have two rooms ready. One is for the way in and one is to, for the hotel accommodation. So we had to accommodate about 2,000 people all together because we had about 2,000 people because we, many people came also to have holiday because it wasn't Rimini. So they, many people stayed one week more to have the holiday. Anyway, one country arrives and they were not on the list. They were not in any, any uh, Excel file or whatever <laughs> as a competitor or as a coach or as an umpire, nothing. So this these guys arrive. I, I don't want to mention the country, it doesn't matter. I was gonna ask what country it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, because then they get angry at me. Anyway. Mm. So these guys arrive. The bus was full, and there were 50 more than 50 people in this bus. Well, right, they come inside. Okay, they go first for accommodation. Because first they have to pay the accommodation, and with the bill of the accommodation, they go to get the ID cards. So this guy, these two, these two, let's say, uh, sabums or mars or whatever, they go to the accommodation and uh, they start to argue because first of all, we didn't know nothing about them. We didn't know how many, we didn't know nothing about them. And they wanted to have rooms in the hotel. But I mean, how do I get a hotel at the last moment for 52 people, okay? So they started to argue about, I want a, a single room and I want a double room and this a triple room and so on and so on. Okay, so after 20 minutes and all the other countries were, were waiting, of course, because there were many people waiting to get there they, and they were all done, let's say, they only have to pay because it was all agreed. So at, at one moment, the, 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 the owner of the ATC, which is a good friend of mine, because I mean, I will always work with, uh, with Jonah because I did a lot of things there because and you got friends at the end. So the owner gets to me and she was crying on my shoulder, the lady. And she said, oh, I cannot stand this anymore. These people are crazy. I said, okay, no, no, I come. And I went there. I said, hello, gentlemen, hello. At that moment, I was not even a master. I said, hello, Mr. Boss. I said, uh, you're trying to make problems here. I said, no, no. I said, look, you see my watch? You have two minutes. From now, you have two minutes to give the list. How many rooms, how many people, and put the pony, money on the table, two minutes. And I stay here two minutes. I put my stopwatch. From now, bang, I put my stopwatch. Into two minutes, they had the money ready. They had the rooms ready, everything was done, <laughs> okay? I said, if you go over two minutes, you're out. You can take the bus and go back more than 24 hours in your bus, go home. Okay, at that moment, I'm not a nice guy, but I don't care. But in two minutes, I solved the problem. So sometimes, you know, in those times, it was like that. And there are thousands more of those stories of only that championship. Can you imagine? Just that one championships. 
God. Oh, yeah. You, you can't imagine how many things happened with people. Because, you know, in those years, then the people were not organized at all. And then, and then they come. Most people come, and they come with one more, more, one less, or one more. And you get a problem with the room. Because when you have to put 2,000 people in the first week of July in Rimini, in Rimini in July, and I did it in the first week of July because I wanted to give a very good service to the people because the weather is beautiful. And yeah, it was really bloody hot. Okay, outside and inside the hole, I have to admit. Anyhow, so I wanted to give the good service, but I mean, it's so difficult to get a hotel for more than 50 people at the last moment. Okay, we arranged it because the people of the agency, I know them and they do everything for me. They, they even walk from Rimini to Rome if it's necessary to meet me. So good relationship I had with them. So it was possible to do it. Yeah. And I, I know from speaking to some, one or two, some organizers that there's still, still those sort of things are going on at a, a championships with countries just arriving or they arrive at more people than they say they would arrive. It's, 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 yeah. It hasn't, hasn't totally been fixed, I suppose, you know. It's, uh, but I don't understand it because now with the social media, I mean, if, if I leave from Italy to go to a tournament in, in Ireland and I'm on the airport and uh, I see two guys didn't show up because they were stuck in the traffic or they lost the plane or whatever, what do I do? I right away call the organizer, and I said, listen, be prepared because we are two less, so we need to, we have one room less, so they already know. Then I fly from Rome to Dublin, it's three hour flights, then I have to go to, to, the, to the organizer, to the hall, maybe another hour, maybe two hours, so they have three, four, five hours time to, to fix it. But if I come and I don't say nothing, and I show up and I stand in front of everybody, and then most of the time they're also ignorant, uh, in your, and they also want to have their, their word about it because you know this and that. No, no, that doesn't work again. Yeah. You, you have to be, yeah, you have to, you have to work to make sure that the organizer has no problem when you arrive. That's the way. But I think we, we did a, a good job in the last 10 years. So it almost happens all the time when they have world champs or whatever, it's all fixed in a, in a moment. And the, the tournament and the umpire committee members, they are really, really fantastic people. They, they know how to handle. Yeah, and if you do the way in and you're on the scale and you have the big screen and you see your picture and you see this is really fantastic. Now, I mean, it gives such a good image to the ITF. And when you get in the hall and you see the hall fixed well, uh, this, this is something because people pay. It's yeah. not only you pay the one the inscription fee, you pay to go there. You are one week maybe off of your job or maybe one week off your gym, you can go. Or maybe you have one week off school. We have to pe treat the people like queens, like princesses, like kings when they arrive. That's our duty as organizer. Because people put a lot of efforts in this economical expo uh, effort. Think about families that have kids and the kids are in the national team and the family has to pay everything for the kids to go to the world championships. That's a, that's a lot of money on the budget of a family. You know, and I always remember these things because it's the same for me. I mean, if, if, if Timothy has to compete somewhere, I pay for that. We pay, our family, we pay for that. And then it's an open championship. And in this championship, it costs you five, six, six thousand years, six thousand euros a year at least to compete around the world. Okay. Yeah. And that's not only me, eh? yeah. or our, my family. It will be the same for, for your parents, maybe, or whatever, and so on and so on. So, I mean, you have to realize that. You have to make a very, 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 very good tournament with a very good accommodation and, and so on and so on. That's your duty. Yeah. I definitely, like, as a competitor, like, I do like to turn up to our championships and have it looking nice and feel like it's a, like you said, I feel like it's an event, you know, like, I feel like it's something big to be at. Like it's, it's big to be there, you know, like you said, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, 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 good a, it's a happening. Yeah. It's a happening, Jamie. Yeah, Everything yeah. in the world is a happening. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. A, it is definitely. A grading, a grading. That's a happening. You know, the student come to your gym and, and train with you. For them, it's a happening. They want to see you smiling. Yeah. They want to see that you are in, in shape. They want to be feel good. This is the same in everything what we do in the yeah. Taekwondo. Yeah. It's, as you mentioned, you, are, you have students that want to come and see you in shape. Uh, I had Ma uh, Master Mark Hutton was on uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like I said to him, one thing I have massive respect for him for is the fact that he keeps himself in shape and trains 
so often. And I also said that I do have massive respect. I see you train and you've already mentioned that you train pretty much every day and keep yourself in shape. Um, I suppose, uh, what, what kind of motiv- motivates you to train, to, to keep training? Or is it just a, it's a lifestyle habit now that you just, it's just something you do? Or is there something that motivates you to train so often and keep training? Well, if I go back to Master Mark Hurton, well, because, you know, out of, out of the millions of people, there are just always a few that are excellent in something. Yeah, he's really one of those people, no? I mean, we all know Mark, and uh, I, I can say that I also contributed a lot because uh, to his, uh, let's say, development, that I went to Scotland for many, many, many years teaching he was always there. I, I know what he does for it, what he did for it. So I really appreciate and I really, yeah, I have a high opinion about the Master Mark. About myself, uh, well, first of all, it's my passion. Second of all, it's my job. Third of all, uh, I'm an instructor. So if, when I teach, I want to teach. I don't, I don't want to teach with, my, with opening my mouth. I want to teach opening my mouth and also trying to show as good as I can my, the, the, the technique, my ability, as long as it's possible. And this, I think, is, is, is a lack of many. Because uh, if you do not train ordinarily, or I mean, if you do not train every day, you do not uh, do your, you know, you have to have a small routine. The routine can be 20 minutes, half an hour. It's only half an hour a day of 24 hours a day you have that you can train yourself. Okay, anyway, you do your, your routine and that keeps you in shape. I mean, you don't have to do 50 uh, Yop Jackie sidekicks every day. If you do 10, 20, it's enough, but you do that, you do them and you do it every day. If you do 20 sidekicks every day, it's 140 a week. That's more than most of, the, of some uh, uh, color belts do. So you, it keeps you in shape. So I, I think, and of course, I have someone at home. I, I, I want him to see his father yeah, doing well. I mean, this is something that uh, I will try as long as I can in my, uh, in my age to show him that if he one day gets my age, that he can do the same. Yeah, that is what, yeah. I, I, I see, like I said, I've seen video, like the videos of you training and doing patterns and kicking and that, and I like that it is... Uh, I suppose it is inspiring to see that, you know, like you said, as somebody who is maybe getting older, that you're, like, you're not necessarily going to be humpled over and, you know, barely able to walk. It's like you, you can still, if you keep at it and you keep putting in the effort, you can stay flexible. You can keep, keep yourself young physically, you know? Yeah. It's also, of course, <laughs> it has to be in your head. Eh? Yeah, yeah. You, need, you need a mentality, the character to do it. I mean, I never accepted something like that. I mean, when, I can tell you one small story. I don't know how much time we have, but uh, I mean, I can, t- I can talk for five hours, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when I did my sixth degree, we were in, in Canada in the World Championships in 1990. So there was a grading. So there was a lot of people in this grading and Grandmaster Tran, Grandmaster Serif, they were the examiners and they were sitting uh, behind the table. And uh, I was not really interested to do my sixth degree. I was pushed by my president of my federation in Italy. And also with my, I was also pushed by, my, by, by, by other people to do the grading, but I was not really interested. Okay, so anyhow, we were in this room and we were all, uh, we, were, we were there. We, most of them were sitting. And I was always running around, stretching, kicking, doing my things until we had to line up, of course, and bow and then, waiting for our turn. I, I still remember that day, that, that people that was sitting, just, just sitting until they were called to, 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 perform, to perform whatever to perform. And I, I, I still cannot understand that. I mean, all my life, I cannot understand that, that you're just waiting. There's the same in my gym. I cannot stand people that come to my gym because normally I'm in the gym. So they come in the, in the gym and they start to talk to each other or they, they start to sit down and do nothing. I cannot stand that. Then you come to the gym, I'm in the gym, you bow, get in the gym and start to work out. It, until I don't say uh, chariots, doesn't matter. You, you are there in the gym, not to lose time. 
Okay, we'll come back to this 1996 degree grading. So it's my turn. Uh, I, okay, I do my grading. I, I do what I have to do. I do so some and I do two chair and whatever. I do my self defense and I do whatever. Okay, and finish their grading. In this grading, there were a lot of people that did not finish the pattern. Really, they didn't. They couldn't do the pattern. They didn't finish, and they also were not able to do other things. Okay, doesn't matter. Also, that everybody's different. Okay, so after the after the the, the, the grading, uh, Grandmaster Tran announced that the promotion will be uh, set. Those those who promote in the in the party. Okay, well it's fine. Okay, so we bow talk. We get out of the room. Everybody happy because they did uh, what they had to do. And next day, I, I, we are in the hall. I mean, I'm, I'm a coach. And uh, Master Tran comes to me, and he, Grandmaster Tran co comes to me, and he says to me, "Oh, Grandmaster, uh, uh, Mr. Boss, you did really well. Uh, so we are, we are going to now announce your promotion." I said, "Ah, thank you very much, sir. I'm really happy with that." I said, "How about the other ones?" I said, "He said to me, no, everybody's promoted." I said, "I don't want it." I don't want you to promote me. And he looked at me over the face. I said, what do you say? I said, I don't want you to promote me. I said, what do you mean? I said, I said then that's not a promotion then. I said, if there are people that could not perform the pattern and did not finish or did not finish the pattern and you are going to promote also them, then I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And he said to me, okay, we are going to have another talk about it later. I said, okay, sir, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I, it's not nice that I said that. And it, it's even not even nice that I say it now in this talk with you. But wow. this, this, is, this is the thing, what's going on all the life. It's still going on. People, I mean, go for grading and not really prepared. If you're not really prepared, the Federation must stop you, not because your time is up, not because you are a seven and you go for eight because, and you waited so many years. And maybe in all those years, you did not practice too much and you did not go for any training in the national level or you did not officiate in your own country and you just show up before your eight degree. And the national country should say, no, we do the same here. It's not, if you don't show up, I mean, we have rules. And the rule said, you have to do this every year, tak, 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 tak. If you don't do it, you wait one year more. Very simple. Because this is the only way that people want to listen, by rules. Yeah. And if you have no fixed rules, then the level goes down. And it's just a matter of having your belt around your whatever. And that's it. That's not, that's not, that's not what I like. Sorry. Oh, Maybe yeah. I, 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 I don't want to offend anybody, but, but this is not what I like. This is not my way of uh, being a martial arts instructor or whatever. It's not my way. No, no, I definitely, I, as a, personally, I 100% agree. Um, like I said, I think there's a level that, like even just like physical shape that like that certain that you expect from certain to, a certain degree to have like you know if you're look if you look out of shape you know it's just, there's just a certain physical way expected to be and like you said even the minimum waiting time like that's like you said it's the minimum that's for the people who are at the very elite you know the the top people to to wait and maybe it might take the best people that long to wait not somebody like you said who doesn't train that often and doesn't put in much effort and then they just oh well I've waited my five years or my four years or so it's time for me to grade it's like well if you haven't been training in that time then that's not the minimum time for you the minimum time yes. for you is going to be something else. The minimum time is for people who are training every day, putting in the effort and, and are tra like training and progressing all the time. That's who the minimum yeah. time, waiting time is yeah. for. Yes, of course. You have people, of course, a lot of people that have physical problems. That, that happens, of course. I mean, you can, you, you can become a master, but you could not perform at 100 or 1,000% because you have a knee problem. Okay, I, I understand that. Or you have a back problem. Okay, but fix it before you go for the grading. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the same in the military service. In the military service, not everybody becomes a general, eh? or not everybody becomes a, a colonel. No, it's not possible. Even if you are 20 years there, you stay in your place. You don't get a general. But in the martial arts, it's, it's normal 
that when your time passed, you go for the grading, you, you, you become whatever. And, and I mean, you can, okay, you can't stop it because it, it happened already 20, 30, 40 years ago, this kind of, of, of going on. You can't stop it because once you start it, it's, it is hard to get, to get back. But you can do something about it in your own country to make sure to train together, to have the masters together. I mean, I'm in Italy once a year, all my seven and eight degrees, we train together. So we have a good time together. We do all the patterns. We have a good social time and anyhow they, they can, and they prepare for that because they don't want to be ashamed to be on the floor. So you understand? So it keeps them going. It, it, and I see also in the island, they do it. I mean, I, I see the masters in the, in the six degrees training together. It's beautiful. It has to be done because if you don't do it, then people go just go, go and, and, and go for the grading and, and that's it. And, and also, for example, every grading for seven, eight degree, uh, we do in Italy. Nobody can do the grading outside of Italy. Everybody has to do it in, our, in, in this country. So I'm a nine degree, so I will be in the panel. If I only have one nine degree, I will call one other nine degree. Normally can be from, normally I do from one grandmaster from Greece because a friend of mine and, and we do the grading together, but you have to do it here because so I can control if they are well prepared or not. If they're not well prepared, sorry, it, I will not pass them because it's not. The, and, and also when you do the grading, the door is open. Everybody can come inside and watch because I don't want, I will never do a grading uh, with closed doors. I don't do that because the people that go for the grading must show the other ones that, that they are that they are uh, at that moment good enough to do it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, if, if, if you're good enough, why not stand up and perform in front of as many people as possible? If you believe and you have the confidence to do that, then what have you got to hide? You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to hide, but I can, I can tell you the first time Grandmaster Lam and Grandmaster Panos came to Italy with me to do the, to do the panel, so they get into the hall and this hall is full of people now. And uh, they say to me, your master, what's going on here? I say, what do you mean, sir? It's full of people. Yeah, normally it's always with closed doors. He said, no, not in Italy. We have open doors, everybody can come. And I want the students, because those ones going for, for master or for, for a seven or eight degree, they bring their students. You know, the students come with them. They want to see the, the, the master performing. It's just a wonderful, what do we want more? It's just fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's quite different, actually. Yeah, because, like, I imagine I've got a great experience like that, like if uh, the uh, students to have a chance to see, because it's not something that, that would happen very often is, you know, as a student like that, seeing their, maybe their instructor like that going to grade. Um, so it's like that, it's a different experience. Yeah, therefore, also normally, I always say to my instructors, when you teach, for example, let's say you are four, fifth or six or whatever belt you are, but you are, let's say four degree and higher, do the patterns together with them. You are four degree, you go for warang, don't tell them what to do, stay in front of them, do the pattern with them. And then you correct them in the second time they do the pattern again, do them with them. So they learn how to make uh, the movement. They, they you know the, the time limit of all the, all, all the movements. It's, it's, and you keep in shape yourself. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going to do Jiu Chair with Timothy. Don't worry. <laughs> not anymore. Okay, I can do a part of Jiu Chair, but when it comes to the split kick, flying in the air, I prefer not to break my legs. So I've been very honest with that. Okay. <laughs> so th th there are, of course, some exercises when you get a little bit older, they are a little bit more difficult. I still, I try, but... Uh, it's, they are dangerous. They become dangerous for you, you know? So you have to be careful. I, when I do some, there are some patterns and I think by myself, why do you not try to make it so difficult? Anyhow, for the youngsters, it's not a problem. But for the, for the, for the oldest, yes, it's going to be a problem. Uh, so I, I know you mentioned already some of the, the, like the contact and, and things like that with the, with the competition. Where do you think, where do you think ITF competition in terms of like the rules, in terms of contact, the size of the ring, that sort of, where do you think it might be maybe I don't know, five years time. What do you think Taekwondo Sparam will look like? No, I, or even I think competition the, in general. Uh, the competition will not change because uh, you know, uh, 
our light contact it is a light contact, but it's not, it's not a continuous light contact. You know, continuous means not to stop the fight all the time, but, but on the other hand, this is the ITF system. So when you fight in this system, you know, I mean, don't worry, Jamie, I look every day. I'm not telling you a, a liar. I look every day at the bouts that have been done in Ireland, in Germany. I look at all the fights, you know, and especially, of course, the category of my son. That's normal, okay? And I look at all the fights. And when I see this competition, I sometimes I get, you know, I can shiver, I, my, my, my skin comes up, my hair comes up, what I see. Because I think most of the referees, they, they should be referees in the point stop fighting, not in the light contact. There's a lot of work to do in this. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. And also some people uh, told me, said to me, and this is also true because they make, they make a good, uh, yeah, they make good words to me. They say, yeah, Grandmaster Boss, this is what we have in the ITF. This is the way they want to have the, 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 the fight. So we have to realize that this it is. But for example, when you go to the Roma Open or you go to Master Willy, to the Open Dutch, we do light continuous sparring because they let you fight. We let you fight. We are not always here to stop you because of whatever. That's a really continuous sparring. There's also a little bit more of contact and so on and so on. I don't say this is a light contact Waco. No, this is light contact Tegundo, but, but without interfering all the time. Okay, this is what I like. But of course, as long as we have a floor which is eight by eight, and we have competitors that are really, let's say, sharp. You know, the coaches and the competitors, they know their job. When it's time that they have to go to the coach because the equipment is not really well, or they are a little bit tired, they just stop by themselves and they go to the coach and, you know, and there is no interference or, or, or competitors that walk out of the ring or they make sure they go out of the ring, but not as a minus point, but out of the ring because one warning more or less, it doesn't hurt them. But unless this is going on and this is going on all the time, just look at the bouts. And I mean, it's something that irritates me a lot to be honest with you, it irritates me a lot, but okay, this is what we have and then we have to get uh, used to it and we, get, we have to get and train our students that this is the way in the ITF. When you go to the WACO light contact, of course, this is different. The ring is seven by seven. They let you really fight. There you can really show your ability because it's possible. You can kick, you can punch, you can do everything. So it, it's different. It's a different light contact. Okay, I don't say which is one is better because I don't want to uh, make sure that this one or the other one is better, but I have my opinion about it, of course. And I also see that some people in, in some kind of uh, sparring competition have more uh, possibility. So, and when you have sometimes more possibility uh, to do better because the system is better and the environment is better and the recognition is higher, yeah, sometimes then you start to lose people. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel when I watch a lot of matches back, look, maybe I shouldn't say this as a competitor, but I do feel like a lot of times I'm watching match back, matches back and I feel that the referees are, I feel like I end up going, why did you stop the match there? What, what was that for? What was that warning for? Why oh, did you stop? I, I, and, I and remember maybe I them. Maybe I shouldn't say that as a competitor because, you know, it could, so it could come back to bite me, but that's why I feel like a lot of the times you're looking at referees going, I haven't a clue, like, do you know, know what you're looking at there? Or, you know, and it's... I would like to sometimes just see, just, just step away, just leave it, leave it flow. Like you said, I want this as a competitor. I want this, yeah. I want the match to flow when I'm competing. I want it to flow. I don't want it to constantly stop. And when I'm watching it, I don't want to see it constantly stop for no reason. Yeah, just remember what happened in Ireland. You were fighting 57, I think, no? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. You, and you lost for whatever. No, that was it. That, that was Thomas. I, I won 57. Thomas got a bad decision. Oh, yeah, Thomas, Thomas, yeah. yeah. Bad disqualification. Yeah, no, okay. yeah. yeah, but you understand. I mean, yeah. I, I remember that. I remember what happened there. And of course, there are many things happen in any competition, something. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But listen, 
that's what I said before. I look at all the videos and I put them all in slow motion. So it takes me a lot of time and I spend a lot of time to, to look. And I'm, I, I really hope from, from the bottom of my heart that what I'm doing, 10% of the umpires that are umpires on the world championship, only 10% of what I'm doing of the 100%, if they do what I do, they will understand what I'm talking about. But I, I know the people don't do that because people do not invest time to see what happens and how we can make it better. Because this is my experience in 50 years in Taekwondo. And I don't want to have offend or put my finger or point my finger at anybody because anybody, everybody just try to do their best. But you can always do better. That is the point of what I'm talking about. I can do better physically. I can do better technically. I can do better at a level of administration and, and so on and so on. But I have to put efforts, not because I'm a nine degree. I'm just a nine degree, that's it. I can still learn looking at others. I can still learn from the paperwork. And this is something, and I can still learn looking at videos and make sure that hopefully in, in, the, in the future, those things not, do not happen anymore. Because this is important. Yeah. I, I hope a lot of people listening to me that are unbiased. <laughs> no, no, but I, of course, I, I really appreciate the work people do here. But you have to see it in the way that you are a professional person. And when you are a professional person, it's the same when you have a job. When you are professional, you took it for professional. The same in business. If you want to make a good business, you have to be professional. It, it's, it's, it's the same. The same with your training. If you are training and you have a, a bad trainer, you will not become a world champion. Maybe first time, yeah, but not for the second, not for the third. Yeah, it is the same. Also, your trainer must involve. Now, if, if I may say, may say, uh, say myself, in my gym, when my son was uh, getting better and better, there was a time I felt I'm not the, the right one for you anymore. I'm not good enough for you anymore to teach to you. So I got Master Leandro, my student, to teach in my gym, yeah, where I go every day. And he was teaching in my gym to my competitors, not myself. Yes, I was there. I was looking, observing, trying to learn more. Because the time passes. You know, people, the younger people like yourself, they get more and more, I don't know, they are faster in thinking in the way they are conversating. And it's not for me anymore, I'm too old for that. So there was a time that I felt, no, no, let, let me get out of this and let me, let me get someone else that can put more input to my, to, my, to my boy, not only to my boy, to my students. Of course, of course, I always talk about my boy because he's my boy, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, because uh, you know, that's normally, takes, as a father, I do that. Yeah, it takes a lot of, like, you, you need to have, I suppose no no ego to do that to especially like with, especially with your son to go especially with Timmy to go okay I don't feel like I can give him maybe necessarily what he needs right now I'm going to let my, especially even my your 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 student take over t coaching him Takes yeah lot, you know. the same same myself I go to to Master Leandro three four times a week and he teaches to me I train I I don't teach to him he teaches to me I mean we do. Of course, the fitness program. I do only fitness program with him. So I mean to be in shape. So we do a lot of uh, uh, push-ups, uh, squats, uh, uh, kicking with elastic uh, bands and then so on and so on. But that, that, and he teaches to me. He makes a program. He sent, before I go, two hours before he sent me the program, I look at the program. And then I say, oof, oof. <laughs> 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 so I go there. And before we start, I, I go half an hour uh, running. Yeah, okay, and then, then we start the, the program. So he has, you know, the time schedule for this and we have a time schedule for that. And I say, oof, oof, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we do more or less one hour. And then uh, at the moment that we are still training, uh, my other guys, Timothy, Andrea, Federico, they, they come inside and they, they change and they get ready. And when they are ready, uh, I finish. And then I sit down and I look at my, at the other ones. Uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's just fantastic to see the, your guys, you know, your, your top competitors, to see your training. This is something that gives me such a drill, you know, that gives me such a pleasure. I mean, yeah. 
it's great to see the passion. I have one more question, I suppose, before we finish. Um, I ask it, I'm sure I'm expecting, I could kind of expect that, I suppose, that the number one answer here, but I ask everybody, I can expect it. If you had to pick a favorite fighter to watch, um, uh, who would you pick? Oh, there are really many, yeah? There are really many. There are really many very good competitors. Okay. I think Julio Carlos, I must admit, he is a, he is a good fighter and he is a clever fighter. Okay? That's a, I don't want to say that he's the best, but he, he is good. Okay, so I, I, I admit that. I don't want to say he's better than my son, but he is good. Okay. I really like Adam Shelley. When he was, when Adam was still was competing, I, I, I really liked him. Uh, uh, difficult to say. In, in, in the, I mean, in the, in, the, in the male world, let's say in the male uh, competition, in all the categories, there are some really good people there. I mean, okay, someone becomes the world champion because he was just a little bit better at that moment in the final. Doesn't mean that he's a better fighter overall, let's say like that. I, I mean, he was just the winner. And sometimes, sometimes one wins, I mean, because he was so much better. Uh, let me see. Ah, of course, Vitaly. Vitaly Solovay is uh, one, of my, yeah, one of my favorites at this moment because Vitaly is, yeah, he has also, of course, you know, this has to do also with luck. Okay, what, what means luck? Luck is that you start Taekwondo and you start it somewhere where you can train every day, where the instructor is available every day. So, for example, I don't know about you, but fitly, his daddy and mama are available every day. Timothy has his daddy, as Leandro, we are available every day because we have our own gym. And, and Katja and Oleg have their own gym. So students that can go to the gym every day and that eat, I mean, in, in my house, what do you think we talk about when we have dinner or lunch? Oh, I'd imagine it's Taekwondo. <laughs> it's the training. <laughs> <laughs> but, not, but, but imagine all those competitors that eat at home with their parents that are not involved in Taekwondo. They don't understand nothing about it. They are only, let's say, proud of the son because he is a, he's a champion, but they don't know nothing else. That's very different than us now. I mean, we, we eat, we drink, we sleep with Taekwondo or with whatever. That's so different. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't know. I think I, I don't want to give other names because there are many also in, in Argentina. They have a, a box full of super competitors in Ireland, of course, nothing to say about Ireland because if you look better, 2017, you won everything. So, I mean, Ireland is also a, an example and you have un unbelievable good uh, instructors and in which I follow. And uh, of course, I know Stephen and uh, Cooley, Stephen Ryan, and Adrian, and I know Mark, I know all these guys so, for so many years. So I know their level, what they are doing, and how they are officiating. So it's really fantastic. So there are, I mean, the, the level of coaches, of course, is really, really high. Huh? I mean, I mean, a competitor can travel around the world and can get the best from everybody. So this is really fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sure the easiest answer for your favorite fighter to watch was uh, was Timmy. <laughs> no, just I mean, normally we fathers always go for for this, but you, you yeah. must understand one. I want to say just one thing about this, not because of him. Okay, first of all, uh, what means a competitor? What what means a, a top competitor? A top competitor is someone that trains two times a day. Okay, so th that happens here. I mean. He's now in, 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 in the gym with a personal trainer. So I, I, uh, two times a week, he has a personal trainer only for fitness. Okay, then the other mornings, he's training in a, in a different way. In the evening, in the afternoon, we are training in the gym with Leandro or whatever. I mean, at least two times a, a, a day. That's already something. Then you look at the technical level, the skills. But then, then, I, then I have to admit that I never had a competitor like him in all my life. That is good in patterns, that is good in sparring, that can jump. I mean, and the titles are 
speak about that. I mean, I had many world champions when I was a coach of the, of the national team in Holland and also in Italy, of course. But uh, yes, of course, I admire my son. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of him. And But I, I, yeah, it's difficult to, to place always your own kids now because but there are so many competitors and I, I really enjoy so many people. And this is something, and maybe we, we can, I don't know how much time I still have, but I, I would like to say something about this. You know, this is a, a, a negative thing about being involved in Taekwondo at my level. You know, my students like Leandro and, and all the other ones always said to me, and even my son says to me like this, Daddy, our master, not master. The only thing that we really are disappointed about that you never could coach us. You were never near to us. When I was fighting, you had to be at least at 20 meters because, and I do that. When Timothy is fighting, I'm on 20 meters because otherwise people will say, oh, look at him, he looks a favorite of his son. You know how difficult that is. Some people do not even understand that I must be there at a distance in order that to avoid the people start to criticize or whatever, you know, this is really difficult. So this is something that in my life <clears throat> is, is, is a negative point. Positive is that I always been there, always be there. But negative is, yes, can't be close. Yeah. This is really emotional. Yeah. You don't think you could go back to be coach and to be a coach at any stage? No, not even. Uh, I, I have been coached at the open euros in, in Romania. And uh, he, he did very well. We did very well. It was one time in my life I did. I was coached with him in Taekwondo. But normally, when when in, in, the, in the Waco business, when he's fighting, uh, I go with him and I coach with him with Mario Nord, Nordio or with Thomas or with Leandro. It depends. But uh, I try to be there and uh, yeah, because it gives me still the opportunity to be very close to him and to hug him when it's needed and to slap his face when it's needed or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's mostly the hugs I have for sure but um, yeah I think I think we'll leave it there uh, th thanks Min for coming on I've really enjoyed the chat we could probably talk for another for another hour or so even I'm sure all day um, but uh, yeah thanks Min for coming on I've really enjoyed hearing your stories hearing about your journey and uh, your thoughts and opinions on some of the things around ITF competition and that yeah the only hope we have of course that as soon as possible we can meet each other again have a good time and that our competitors have at least something to look forward to, no? The, the next even, because this year, there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, the World Championships, they, they will be canceled, I think, on the, officially on the 21st of February. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so we have nothing this year. I mean, it's so just a pity. Yeah. So well, anyhow, I wish everybody the best. And uh, let's cross our fingers for something good to come. For sure. For sure. Hopefully it won't be too I, long, like you said. I really thank you for inviting me for this uh, chat. Ah, wishing you all the best and wishing all the people that come after me that have even a, a better talk than I had with you. Thank you very ah, much. No yeah, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. So bye-bye. Yeah. See you. Enjoy your training for today. Okay. <laughs> ciao. Ciao. Ciao.